Hello everyone and welcome to this Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this video is going to show you how you can set up a Lightweight Java Game Library project in Eclipse. So you most likely came here from my other video expecting to see Oscar's video but I've actually now decided to make my own tutorial about getting started because a few things have changed since Oscar made his video. The main thing that's changed since I've been making these tutorials is a new version of Lightweight Java Game Library has actually come out, Lightweight Java Game Library 3, and the latest official release of that is currently in beta at the time that I'm making this video. Obviously we're still going to be using Lightweight Java Game Library 2 in this series because it was made before Lightweight Java Game Library 3 came out, but don't worry too much because you can always switch to Lightweight Java Game Library 3 in the future. The main thing that I'm going to be teaching in these tutorials is how to create 3D graphics using the OpenGL API, and that's exactly the same in both versions of Lightweight Java Game Library. The only big differences in Lightweight Java Game Library 3 are with setting up the display and handling user inputs, so if you want you could actually follow this tutorial series using Lightweight Java Game Library 3, and I know that a few people have, but you would have to find other tutorials for creating the display and handling keyboard and mouse inputs. If this is your first time working with Lightweight Java Game Library, then I'd just recommend using Lightweight Java Game Library 2 for this series, like I will be doing. So to get started, we need to download Lightweight Java Game Library 2, and we also need to download one other library called Slick Utils, which will handle all the image loading for us in Tutorial 6. I've put links for both the Lightweight Java Game Library download and the Slick Utils download in the description, so click on both of those links to download the necessary files. After doing that, you should now have the Slick Utils jar file and a zipped folder containing the Lightweight Java Game Library files. Let's now create a new folder called lib, and in this folder I'm going to put all of the stuff from these libraries that our Eclipse project will actually need. And in here I'm going to create two separate folders, one for jars and one for natives. So in the jars folder we're going to put the jar files that we need from Lightweight Java Game Library, so open up the lwjgl folder, go into the folder called jar, and we need the lwjgl jar and the lwjgl utils jar. So copy those two jar files into the folder you just created called jars. In the natives folder we need to put the lightweight java game library natives, and you can find them in the lwjgl folder in the native folder, and you then need to go into the relevant folder for your operating system, and copy all of those files into your natives folder. And finally, we also need to put that slick utils jar into our jars folder. So your jars folder should now contain these three jar files, and your natives folder should contain all the relevant natives for your operating system. Let's now go into Eclipse and create a new Java project, and I'm going to call this Game Engine, and then just go ahead and click finish, and you should now be able to see your new project on the left here. You then need to go into your Eclipse's workspace folder, and then find the folder for the new project that you just created, and go into that. In here we need to put that lib folder that we created earlier, so find that lib folder which contains the jars and the natives, and move it into your projects folder. Back in Eclipse, if you right click on your new project and refresh it, you should now be able to see that lib folder here. All that's left to do now is to add the libraries to our project's build path, so right click on the project, then go to build path, configure build path, and then click on this add jars button. Then just find your jars folder and make sure to add all three of the jars that you had in there. And finally we just need to add the natives, so click on this arrow here next to the JRE system library, click on native library location, click on this edit button here, then click workspace, and then just find your natives folder, click on it, and then click on all of the OK buttons. So your project is now set up and ready to go, and in a minute you can get started with the tutorial series. Before you go back to the other tutorial though, I just wanted to mention that if you get stuck at any point in the series and run into any difficulties, then check the description of the video that you're on first, because I'll often list the most common mistakes in there, so that you can check those things in your code first. So that is it for this video, and you can get back to tutorial 1 by clicking on the link on the screen now, or by following the link in the description. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have a fantastic week, and I will see you all next time.